We pray that you had a good day and that as you wind down the duties of today, that you'll be able to give a listening here to us and that your hearts will be truly blessed. We are going to go into our program at this time. And we are going to start with the hymn number 590, Trust and Obey. I want to also remind you that tonight's topic will be a continuation of last week's topic that will be done. Tonight we'll be having part two of the sermon that was presented last week. We pray that your souls will be blessed. Praise the Lord. Only way to be happy in Jesus, or even to be happy in this world, is to trust and obey. Let us pray. Great God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you one more time this evening to listen to the dropping of your word. We invite your holy presence into our midst. As we are about to listen to a word from you, we ask that you might send a double portion of your blessing upon your man's servant as he presents the word tonight. Help that whatever will be done or said will be done to your names, honor, praise, and glory. We pray in your name. Amen. This evening... One more time again, we will be hearing from God's man servant, Elder Anthony Kennedy. He will be presenting part two of the message from last week, Thy will be done. So we invite you to stay tuned for that. However, before we go into the message from him, I'm going to bless your hearts with a song. If I ask for things that I should not ask for, if I prayed and I prayed selfishly, if I prayed for myself and not for my neighbor. Not my will, but thine be done. 
beautiful song. We recognize that in everything that we do, God's will is to be done. This evening again, we are here to lift up the name of Jesus. And we pray that wherever you are, you can just take some time out to worship with us at our prayer tour evening. Every Wednesday evening we have our prayer tour night where we pray for the district and we pray for our country and we pray for individuals. We believe that when we pray to God, He answers prayer. And if you need prayer, remember the hotline that you can send in your prayer request. 876 533 You can use that as your prayer hotline to get your prayers request done. This evening I want to continue from where I left off last week, Wednesday. We were dealing with the Lord's Prayer. And we were looking at Matthew chapter 6. And we were at verse 9. You know, all of the topic that will be done. And all of this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I'm going to talk to you in a very short order, but I want you to just listen carefully. You see, prayer is key. And prayer is opening the heart to God, talking to God as a friend. It is key because when we talk to God, he listens and he hears us and he answers us according to our faith. Now, our Father, which our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I want you to recognize that the God we worship is a holy God. When we hallow the name of God and when we get into prayer to pray to God, we are entering into God's private chamber. We decide we are going to talk to him. And so we are right there with him in his studio. You see, Christian friends, talking to God is serious business. We don't go to God unless it is something that we need to talk to him about. And in doing so, we must be serious about that. Now, listen to this. You see, angels, when going before God, they fold their wings. You see, we have angels that have six wings, angels with four wings, angels with two wings. According to Isaiah, when they get before God, they said they use their wings to veil their face because they are entering to God's chamber and they don't, they, because of the glory, the brightness of God, they cannot just look in his face like that because his face is like brighter than the sun. And so they veil their face with two of their wings. They veil their feet and when they have the two wings, they veil themselves just before God. And when they're doing that, the Bible declares that they just don't only veil their face and veil their feet and veil their body, but they sung a song, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. That is telling us Christian friends, how oh, holy and almighty God is. They sung holy, holy, day and night before God. They worship him by saying, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. I come here to tell some of us, Christian friends, that when some of us get before God, it's 
it seems as if we are talking to each other as man. But let me tell you this, Christian friend. God is bigger than us. He is holy. And when we approach him, we must approach him with reverence. Yes, yes Christian friend. We must approach him humble. On our knees. And like the angels, we cry, holy, holy, Lord God almighty. You see, that's the God we serve. We don't approach him any and anyhow. When we need Christian friends to talk to him, we must humble ourselves. <clears throat> then he said, thy kingdom come. You see, Christian friends, how God's kingdom come and how his will needs to be done. We just cannot when we want God's kingdom to come, we need Christian friends to make sure that we are living and that we are doing the things that is required for us to make it to God's kingdom. We cannot just live any and anyhow, talk any and anyhow, behave any and anyhow. When we are talking to God and when we want to make it to his kingdom, we must make sure we are doing the things that he requires of us to do. I tell you that how some of us behave, even some of us as Christians, it tells me that we are not ready yet for God's kingdom. We, we brethren, I'm saying this, and I'm saying this without fear, not favor. Even some of us as Christians, we live as if we don't know that there is a kingdom to gain. And I'm saying to us Christian friends, Whatever or however we live, that's how we are going to get our pay. If we live good, we are going to get good pay. And if we live bad, we are going to get bad pay. No wonder why Revelation says we will get pay according to our works. You see, here he says, Thy kingdom come. I tell you this, Christian friends, that will be done. I, I, I want to tell you something here. Many times we go to God and instead of making sure that we do the will of God, we do our own thing. The first thing is to be done is the will of God. It is He who waking us up this morning, put us on our feet, that we could go to work and do everything else that we can do. So first thing first, his will must be done. We cannot, Christian friends, get up and go about as if we are our own shepherd. We shepherd our own flock. Let me tell you this, we cannot live a moment without him. His will must be done. You see, Christian friends, even Jesus Christ, while he was on earth in Matthew, he said, when he, when he was about to be crucified and he was about to go on that cross he, and he was in Gethsemane he said some things that was very startling he said oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me he wanted the cup to pass because what was before him was not looking good but if he want the cup to pass then his, his will could be done but he went on further to say, Nevertheless, not my will, oh God, but let thy will be done. I'm here to tell you, Christopher, Christ put his Father's will first. We today, tonight, must put God's will first. If we are going to survive, if we are going to make it through this life, to the next, we must put God's will first. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I don't know how, but I am here to tell you that there are many of us Christian friends when we get up in the morning and when we, we go out and we, when we want things to be done, the first thing we pray our prayers, Lord bless me, bless my family, bless, bless, bless my work, bless, bless whatever and let me tell you something, all you talk about is blessing you, bless your family, bless everything. You don't pray for others as Christ prayed for others. You see, we pray some selfish prayers in our time. We need to recognize that these prayers, Christian friends, are not 
than just for ourselves. We must pray for our neighbors. We must pray for our friends. We must pray for our district. We must pray for our world. We must pray for everything that is around us. Because when we do that, we are not selfish. We are saying, God, whatever I want for Tom, Dick, and Harry, I want it also for myself. If I want, if I want to make it to God's kingdom, I must make sure that I allow others to be also in God's kingdom. That's thy will be done. Some of the time when our prayers are not answered, and sometimes when we pray and we do not get an answer, it's because we are praying some selfish prayers. Yes, yes Christian friends, sometimes our prayers, what you want is car, what you want is house, what you want is land, what you want is money, what you want is a lot of things, but God business is not in your prayers. All is in your prayers is about yourself or oneself. But when we put God first, no wonder why he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. Let me tell you something, Christian friends. When you put God first, then God will put you first. Yes. That's a guarantee that he gave us, Christian friends. Look out for God's business and you look out for your business. You cannot live without him. You cannot walk without him. You cannot talk without him. Everything you do is about God. And when that, God sees that in you, then he too will put you first. Thy will be done. Let me tell us, Christian friends, not only that, Christian friends, there are many of us, sometimes we, 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 we are on our journey. There are many of us, we even go and get married, we, we want a wife, and instead of, we, we look at the best, but sometimes that's not what God is looking for us. We look at those nice shaped ladies and we say, God, that's the one I want. But God did not say that to you. God says, let me tell you something. Little is much when God is in it. It is not about beauty. It is not about looks. It's about character. Building. Sometimes, Christian friends, what God wants for us, that's what we don't want. We want something that we see fit in our eyes. I'm saying God's will is to be done. When you want something, what you must first do is put the case to God. God, if this is your will, let it be done. And if it's God's will of a surety, he will lead you in that direction. Many times, Christian friends, we walk and we talk and we behave all unseemly. But I'm here to tell you, it is not about us. It's about God. Thy will be done. Not as I want it, but as hurt as it is in heaven. That's how it should be, Christian friends. There's another part in the, in, in the prayer. He says, give us this day. Our daily bread. You see, there are so many times, Christian friends, that all we work for is food. And all we work for is riches. But if God does not bless us, we just can't survive. We, at all times, must make sure that we put God to the test. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, I'm going to do everything that is possible. Some of us, we steal for our bread. We lie for our bread. God did not say that if we are going to survive, we must take God at his word. No wonder why he says, I was young and now I am old. And I've never seen the righteous man forsaken. Now we see begging bread. You see, David recognized something. And he trusts God for his daily bread. And he says, God, I am here with you for a long time now. And I've never seen the righteous man forsaken nor received begging bread. I know that God, so I can trust you. And so he went on. And he said, I see God, you he prepared a table before me, before the presence of my enemy. I know, Lord, that anything I ask you, you will grant it according to your will. Trust God. He will give you what you desire 
No wonder why he says, ask anything in my name and I will grant it unto you. You see, when you ask in faith, the Lord will grant to you that which you ask in faith. Because God knows that you're going to use it according to his will. I trust Christian friends that as we go through this week and as we face the, the, the tried days that are ahead of us and when we look ahead and things might look bleak and look dark one thing is sure when we get on our knees and when we pray to God and ask him for his will to be done I guarantee you his will will be done in you because God will see that you are doing everything possible to make it to his kingdom. No wonder why Christian friends, there are so many in, 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 in Bible times when they pray, God comes true for them. Tell me some of them who pray. James pray. Lord, enlarge my territory. God look upon him and recognize and see that his prayer was a prayer of faith and God did enlarge his territory. Even Stephen, when he was stoned to death, he prayed and asked God to forgive those who were even stoning him. And the Bible declared that God standing up, showing Stephen a sign that yes, Stephen, I am with you. Let me tell you, God will give us the assurance when we pray and ask that his will be done in us. I'm saying to us, Christian friends, when we pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God gave us that prayer. He can sustain that prayer. He can carry us through. All we need to do is ask him. And when we ask him, he will grant to us that which he pleases him. Tonight, Christian friends, wherever you are, if you want God's blessing to be upon you, if you want to give him a chance in your life, if you want to put him to the test, you have your chance tonight. Just say to him, Lord, I want your will to be done. I'm willing, Lord, to give your will a chance in my life. And by doing so, Christian friends, I guarantee you that he will grant to you his blessing according to his riches in glory. Won't you give him a chance tonight? The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him in? Give him a chance. And I can tell you, that chance you give God, you will never regret it. And you will never be the same. God bless you tonight as we continue to lift him up. We are going to pray two prayers tonight. We want you, wherever you are, just to relax yourself and lift your hearts to Jesus as we lift him up in prayers.
and we are going to lift you up in prayer as well. Those who were not able to send us a prayer request, we always remind you that you can pray in the secrets, secrecy of your homes. You can whisper a prayer to God and God who hears in secret will reward you openly. to make 
those changes that will make us healthy and strong because we know that the pray, praying alone is not enough, but we also need to do our part in order for your will to be done in our lives. So in a special way, we invite you to give us the strength to face this battle. We want to put before you those of us who are sin sick. All of us are sin sick, dear Father. And we know that you have sent your son to die on the cross to save us. We ask that you might help us, that we might reach out to you in faith and that we might cry out like that publican, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Help us not to wait until it is too late when we have our last breath to reach out to you, but help us to reach out and to serve you now while we are strong and we can work for you. We ask that you might continue to cover this community in a special way, dear Father, and protect us from the ravages of the COVID disease that is going around. Help us that we might continue to serve you and those who have not yet made their calling and their election sure to serve you. We ask that they might make up their minds before it is too late so that when you shall come, all of us might be ready to go home with you. These mercies we ask in your precious holy name. Amen. We're going to try another song before we have the final prayer by Elder Kennedy. As the dare.
We also invite you to join with us on Sabbath at 11 a.m. for our divine service. We promise that your hearts will be blessed as we will be having a guest speaker in the house, but you need to be listening in or joining us online to find out who that person will be. Until then, keep safe and we wish you a good rest of, product, a productive rest of the week.